there is so much there that has that has deep metaphysical meaning there i mean you know from a metaphysical perspective the, the the going high that's high consciousness right and and we know that the heaven resides within so to go to a high level of consciousness to, to to dive within you do receive the treasures of the heart so wow you know the languaging of of religion is the same i was at the um, um the Inter- simi valley interfaith this week and we had um a question it was asked how do you use your faith when you're in times of of sadness or distress and Baha'i, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, the woman representing the Universalist Church, the woman representing the Wiccan Church, a Baptist minister, a Methodist minister, um, and I were all there. And we all answered the question. And it was so, it was exactly what interfaith was all about because we all answered the question from the same space. You know, we did it from our particular perspective of faith, but the way we dealt with dealing and suffering and pain was from the same space and it showed that there's really is only this one this one treasure of the heart that comes from that high level of consciousness which can be reached from religieri from linking together from religion that's what it's all about that's what this is about the csl the cslls that are are us and there's a lot of them i was (laughs) yeah i know toys r us is gone (laughs) but cslls r us is here we got it going on, folks. It's got it. You know, we are the center for spiritual living, right? That's what they've branded us, renamed us from the science of mind, the Church of Religious Science. I still like that, but uh, this is what we are, centers for spiritual living. And when you think about the center, of course, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, maybe it was last week. Was, everything's kind of blending. I've been doing a lot of traveling. Went to see my mom this week. She's moving her right side. It's awesome. Yeah. And she was actually reading a poem. I was like, gosh, you are just doing wonders. It's really great. But, you know, when you think of the center, and from Dr. Holmes' perspective, he talks about we are centers of the divine, right? That we are the, the, the spirit that is centered everywhere, that has the center within us and a conference that is nowhere. And if we were thinking about infinity, I think that was last week we did the infinity exercise where I talked about what's up, you just go up, it's total infinity, right? Down below us total infinity to the left to the right it just stretches out space goes out beyond so if you're looking up and down and left and right and we're talking about infinity where does that leave each and every one of us right in the center of it right in the center of it so we are the centers for spiritual living okay but the other thing about center is as we were driving back we drove through a couple little towns i love arroyo grande the center of of arroyo grande that's where all the business comes together that's where everything all the services come together in the center so as a center for spiritual living all our services for living a spiritual life come together here and that's why we talk about meditation that's why we talk about classes that's why we talk about journaling we talk about all the aspects that music all the aspects that can bring a centered life to each and every one of us so that's one of the cells right but we are also, each and every one of us, a center of spiritual living. Because we have all this access to this, we are a center of spiritual living. And the center of spiritual living is amplified by being conscious spiritual livers. To be conscious spiritual living. Another CSL. So those are the CSLs that are us, you see. And Dr. Holmes helped us to get this blueprint. He developed the map taking all the ancient wisdom teachings and the teachings of Jesus and just distilling them down to the bare bones, right? And getting exactly what it was all about, giving us the right equipment, giving us the, the, the tools that we need. He even named one of his books, A New Design for Living, because that's what this is all about. And he says, he says if you could realize the tremendous power of attraction that holds everything in its place, if you could realize that, it's yours, it's yours, this gift this gift it is the divine birthright of every living soul this living this centered life is the divine birthright of every living soul however the challenge is that a lot of us think in terms of limitation i can't i don't i don't know how i've never done it this way no one showed me how well you know what you have because you are centered a conscious, spiritual, living center of all of this activity, you do know how, and you can do it. It's not that you can't, it's that you won't. But this map that Dr. Holmes has laid out for us, this way of understanding spiritual truth, gives us the road map we need and the toolkit that we need to move forward. And the first toolkit is what, what we were talking about just a minute ago. It's 
consciousness. But the challenge is, it's like the two fish at the bottom of the ocean. The two fish are just sort of hanging out, jaw boning together. Blah, 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 blah. Another fish walks up, swims up to him and says, hey, how's the water? And swims off. And the other two fish are like, water? What's that? <laughs> That's kind of how we are. We're, we're living in this consciousness, but we were kind of like, what is that? That's why we come here all the time. That's what this journey is all about. Getting the awareness to understand that we are in spiritual water. And like, the, like we talked about here from this poem from John O'Donohue, like the song talked about, that we, we it takes, and, 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 and Maggie in her, in her reading also, water takes the shape of whatever um, it's being contained by. So our consciousness, which is fluid like water, takes the shape of whatever it's being contained by. And it's being contained by our thoughts and by our ideas. So we can move beyond this limitation and jump into the CSL. The next one I have for you is the conscious, the, the center, the conscious spiritual life kit. Okay, the spot conscious spiritual lifeline toolkit. And that's the other CSL I want to talk about. The one that allows us to take our infinite wishes and move beyond that space of limitation and move to a, a limitless expression of life. Limitless expression of life. But you know, it takes faith. It takes faith. And we have a lot of faith. I mean, I, like I said, I was just, just driving up the, down the highway, coming down 101. Love coming back on 101, you know. And they got those little white lines down the road. And I have faith that most drivers will stay within the white lines. I mean, we, we, most drivers, we have faith in that. And when they don't, what is the next faith mo move? Uh -uh. Faith in my horn <laughs> to remind them to get back into their... And they know exactly what to do because they have faith in what they heard the horn. Oh, the horn, I must be, let me straighten it out, right? We, we got those kind of things. I have pretty good faith that when I flip the switch, the light's going to come on unless the bulb is burned out. If the light doesn't come on, I go for the bulb, change the bulb, light comes back on. I don't really know how that happens. I couldn't rewire a house if you tried to get me to do one be gone but I know how to flip a light switch I know how to turn the car on I used to know how to turn them off till they got those key fob things and you walk away the car is still running but I'll figure that out one day when I get one of those fancy cars right now I just rent them and when I rent them I can't how do you turn this thing off right but we have that kind of faith in things that don't really matter that much right because I mean truly if the light doesn't come on in your house you pretty much know where you are you just kind of go like and you get there. It's fine. But do we have that kind of faith in our conscious way of living a spiritual life? Do we have the faith in this limitless power, this divine birthright that's within every living soul? Do we understand the tremendous power that's holding the planets in place? I mean, if we, Earth would spin out of the orbit if it didn't have that, that holding power, right? We would spin out of orbit if we didn't have the holy power. There's something within us that reminds us every morning when we wake up, I am Steve, and all that is Steve and comes back together so I can get up out of bed and go do my thing. I don't know where it goes when I'm in my dreams. It's all over the place. But when I wake up, zip, it all comes back and holds it in place so I can go out and do my thing. And you have the same experience. I know some of you guys got some crazy dreams. I've seen you. I've been in, I've been in the same dreams. We, we party in our dreams, right? And what is, it makes me wonder, is, is life the dream or is the dream life but anyway that's another yeah, just stay here stay here if you notice i've been cutting down on my tangents i'm getting a little tangent for, you know i have tangent limitation hmm. yeah okay but but back to this idea of faith if we can get into this idea if we can get more faith into that, then we can add more conviction into the experience of life that we're having. We can put more faith in it. We can put more conviction in it. And then the universal laws that are listening to us all the time do not get the mixed messages. If you're sending mixed messages out into the universe, a mixed message is like flying around the airport and never landing. But when you have a conviction of what you're having faith about and you give that message to the universe, you zoom right in on the runway and you land into your good. This is how it works. That's what Dr. Holmes taught us about. He also says, the ocean of life is forever flowing. We could just as well dip a gallon of water instead of a pint from it. How often do we just take a little, a little nibbling instead of the big gulp? You know, my friend uh, Erica, my, it's actually my brother's friend, Erica, used to go to the big bowl. God rest her soul. She's traveling with others. 
But before she left, we would go to the Big Bowl, the Mongolian barbecue place. I think I told you this story, right? The one with the lettuce. And she would take her bowl, and she'd stack the lettuce around the edges of the bowl. So now the, her bowl that was like this is now tall like that. And then she'd fill it all up. You know, and the cooks would be like, because, <sighs> you know, because, you know, you go to Mongolian barbecue, you fill up your bowl, you give it to them, they cook it. And it's, it's like, you know, it's just half a bowl all of a sudden. Hers is always heaping over because she always took a gallon, not a pint. This is metaphorical for what we can do. How many of us are limiting ourselves through our prayers, through our experiences of life by saying, I only need a little bit. I'll get by with just that little old me. I don't need that much. Take it. Take it. Prove, prove yourself to be the religious scientist that you are. Take the experiment and grab the most that you can get out of life. Because you know what? It's there for you. I think I just heard somewhere that it's your divine birthright. Go to the big bowl and stick, stack some romaine lettuce around the edges of your thing. <laughs> and we are doing this. As a species, the humankind is taking gallons out. Decades ago, some of the things that were just, that would startle an adult today are very simple to a little child. My mother's friend, Jeanette, has a, grand, a grandson. He's three years old. Twice a week, this three-year-old dials her up on Facebook. Nobody teaches that three-year-old how to do it. She, he just grabs it and goes, <laughs> Grandma, right there, you know? That's, that's, that's amazing. That kind of stuff, I mean, it used to be science fiction. Now it's just Tuesday, right? This is another day. So if, if we can do that, we can do it for other things. We can do it for global warming instead of the, and, and, and bring in the, the Green Revolution, whatever you might think about how they termed it and whatever they're doing with politics about it. Sustainable life makes a lot of sense. Living sustainably on the planet makes a lot of sense. I mean, what the heck is clean coal anyway? Have you ever touched coal? <laughs> Any of you guys live up north? We, used to live, we had coal. You know what you use coal for? You go and you draw on the sidewalk so you can play hopscotch. You know? Coal is dirty, clean coal. And speaking of that, who decided that g diesel is green? On the pump, why is diesel green? Diesel is stinky dirty. That black soot coming out, the, the, the thing should be black or brown or something, you know? Anyway, I, said, I just get, I, sometimes things just get my ire going. They're just getting me going. But we do have the ability to make some major changes, to dig in with the gallon dipper and make some major changes in the world. Coming back down here, I, Tesla has taken over. It's amazing. I was driving down the 101. It only happens in L.A. Well, up in the Bay Area, too. They've they're, 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 they got that kind of prosperity going. But down here, I was coming back down on the 101, and I saw four Teslas back to back to back driving down the road together. I thought it was a car thing, you know, but they didn't have a car truck, so they obviously were on the road. They belonged to people. They were just driving down the road. I said, wow, look at that. Four Teslas in a row. It's amazing. But we're in a dilemma. Howard Thurman talks about the dilemma. He says the dilemma of modern humankind is to match spiritual and moral maturity with the amazing power created by our mastery over nature. We can blow the place up. <coughs> blow it up. Gone. India, Pakistan, psh, 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 the whole world goes up. We could do that. Or, or we could use that same kind of knowledge and power the entire planet. You know? We could feed everybody. No one needs to be hungry. We have that kind of knowledge, but we've moved so fast, we haven't kept up with our spiritual or moral maturity. And that's where being a CSL, being a center of spiritual living, comes into play. Because we ha we're a center. All the knowledge, all the information is available to us, and we're a center. We can put it together in our town square, right, in, the, in our town hall, and let our governance, our, our thoughts, create the mastery over all that we have, all this amazing power that we have amassed on the planet. We're the ones that get to do that kind of stuff. We're the ones that are talking about that. And you know what? We're not the only ones. The Baha'is are talking about it. The Latter-day Saints are talking about it. The, the, the Muslims are talking about it. The Hindus are talking about it. Everybody's talking about it, but who's doing anything about it? 
It's us to us. It's up to us. It's time. It's time for us to do something about it. Done with New Zealand. Done with Pittsburgh. Done with Thousand Oaks. No more. Time to do something about this stuff. And I don't have the answer, but I know that somebody does because we're all centers in this divine mind. Mine might just be to remind the one in here that can do it. You might just be the one to go talk to your grandkid who does it or your neighbor's kid who does it or your neighbor who's an engineer who goes off and does it or your, your best friend who's a filmmaker who makes the next film that creates thought that somebody does it. Who knows how it comes out? Maybe it's John Lynn who writes the next song that he gives to the powers and they read it, they sing it in China and it does it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's time. These things are happening to remind us that there is this amazing power but we have not reached the spiritual or moral maturity yet to master it. But it's time. We've got to use it. We've got to use our conscious spiritual lifeline, which has the contents of faith, the contents of meditation, treatment, affirmations, visioning, classes, journaling, that's all the, the regular stuff. We talk about that. But there's some less obvious stuff, too, in that toolkit that I'm talking about. Gratitude. Relationship. Silence. Reflection. Just about every prayer that Jesus talked about, he started out with thank you. It's not me, but the uh, humbleness. It's not me, but the Father within. I give thanks for the Father within that is doing the work. The consciousness within. We can begin everything with gratitude. How many of you say your grace before your meals? It's kind of gone out of fashion. We do one. I'll teach you a really great one. Some of you already know it. If you know it, join me right now. Here you go. You ready? Yum. Yum. <laughs> you laugh. But our Sanskrit friends can tell you that yum, yum is a consciousness of the heart. It's a sharing of love. You're blessing your meal with love when you say yum, and it feels good, and it makes you smile just like your food should if you haven't overcooked your vegetables. <laughs> we are relational beings. I defy any of you to describe yourself without a relationship. I am a friend. I am a son. I am a brother. I am a minister. I am a man. I am in love. We're all about relationship. The number one relationship we can have, Heather was singing about it in that song, to go to the kingdom within and have a relationship with the treasure trove of knowledge that is within you that is God itself. We don't have enough devotional work in the science of mind. I want to talk more about that as the year goes on. To be in devotion, to love and to praise spirit that is residing within each and every one of us, to have a relationship with God. That was, remember we were talking about living, this is a year of living with intention. My intention is to have a relationship with God like a friend. I've been starting my, fr my prayers in the morning. Dear friend, dear friend and loved one, I know the truth and the truth is known through you by means of me. Have that relationship. Take the time to devote some quality time if you do quality time with your partner, if you have date night or something, have a date night with God. That means you get to take yourself out because we are the expression of God being made manifest here and now. And if you want to know what you're going to do on that date, go into the silence. Go into the silence and simply listen. And then reflect what you hear through your actions in the world. Howard Thurman says, it is no ordinary experience to spread our lives before the honest scrutiny of our own selves. But there is no escape from such a necessity. It's not an ordinary experience. People don't do it. We don't take that honest time to reflect, that honest time to go into silence, that honest time to devote ourselves to spirit. But when we do, something magical happens because it is a necessity and we should not escape from it. If you try to escape from it, life will go pew, cosmic two by four. Hopefully it's balsa wood. But if it's oak, ooh, baby. And don't get, don't let it come down mahogany because that is going to leave a really nasty knot. You know? 
We have it. It is a necessity. There's no escape from it. The journey of life will bring us these opportunities to shift and to change. We all get it. We all have challenges. We all have moments where we suffer. Whether it's the suffering of a, of a transition where we're going to miss somebody terribly or we lose a job or we lose a relationship or just stubbing our toe in the dark because the light didn't come on. Pain is going to show up. It's a necessity to have an honest scrutiny with ourselves so that we can live the joyous experience that life brings, of, brings us to, to, to live, right? I just urge you to do it. That's my call. That's my desire this week for us to, to make a plan, to make a plan to use your CSLs, to use your Center for Conscious for, for spiritual living. Use your center for spiritual living. Know that you are a center of spiritual living through which great things are happening in the world by means of you on a regular basis. Use your divine relationship and see the influencers. In that moment of silence, you get to, to have a little examination of your life. And these, this is old stuff. I mean, nothing that I'm saying is new. I think what is Socrates, I can't even add up his age that's way long time ago. But what did he say? The unexamined life is not worth living. The one that we don't take a look at, the one that we don't get silent about and do some reflection about is a waste. We've got enough waste going on. But we don't have to do it. So in that moment of silence, you'll see what's influencing you. You'll, you'll figure out how your decisions are being made. You'll look at the judgments that are coming up in your life, and you see the behaviors that you're participating in that might be limiting you or hampering your goodness that's unfolding. I'm saying you a lot, but I could be saying I, 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 because I'm doing this, and as I do it on a regular basis, my life is dramatically changing on a, all, all the time. And I like it. I like to, 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 to be the, 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 the driver with, with God as my partner, of my change, because change is going to happen. So do you want it to be conscious, or do you want to be haphazard about it? I think conscious is a little more fun. And even if it doesn't come out the way you want, that's okay. That's just a detour, because you've already set your intention through a deep sense of faith and conviction. So if it didn't come out right now, that just means you're taking the, the scenic route to get to where you're going to go. But you're going there because you set your mind on where it is you want to go. Through that reflection, through that moment of silence, through that contemplation, using that divine relationship, Howard Thurman says it so well. I usually don't put questions in my quotes. But he says, we're at a crossroads. He says, I wish I could do his voice. It's so beautiful. Oh, for how many years by our deeds shall we curse God and die when we could reflect God and live? That's where we are right now. From, from the islands far, 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 many, many miles to the south to just a hop, skip, and a jump over a hill into Thousand Oaks. We have seen enough of the cursing of the divine and the death that it brings. But now it's time. It is time to reflect God and to live. And as centers of spiritual living, coming to a center for spiritual living, you're the conscious spiritual liver that gets to do it here and now. And so it is. All right, and there's our roadmaps. Here's a reminder. Here we are. Let's do it. Being a conscious center of spiritual living takes me on a joyful journey because I have the right equipment and a good map. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. It is our prayer time. Let's do that. Thank you. Please allow me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Slide the God candle over there. Put this right here. And for those of you who like that, there you go. <laughs> Sideways. <coughs> All right, so time for the healing prayer. One of the things I talked about in the toolkit is treatment. Five steps. Dr. Holmes figured it out. Could be three steps. Could be one step if you do it. 
doesn't matter. We teach five steps in the beginning because it's like, well, these, these wonderful musicians can tell you, if you don't learn the scales, you can't write good music, right? So eventually, once you've figured out the five steps, you get to go all over the place and start however you want to because it's really about consciousness, about understanding that there's only one life. That life is God. That life is my life, your life. That life is real right here, right now. Everything that's in it is here, right here, right now. Thank you for that so I can let it go. That's basically the five steps right there in a nutshell. So I'm going to do that part of it, but the realization part we all get to do together. If there's something you would like to realize as true and already happening, because remember, we're talking about infinity. So everything is already existing in infinity, and we are centers within the spiritual life, right? So if we know that it's already happening and we claim it, then what happens? It comes to the center to be distributed out as an experience. So that's what we're calling forth. If you have someone in your life that you want to bring a centered experience into expression right here and right now, I invite you to say that name or say that condition out into the room and we'll pray together. Mm. Mm. Yes. Dear friend, mother, father, God, divine love, great spirit, Allah, Baha'u'llah, Buddha, Muhammad, Joseph Smith. All the various ways that we have identified spiritual masters, it drives us all the way back to one thing, that there is one life, that life is God, and that life is everyone's life in this room, and everyone we've been speaking about, and everything that is experienced here and now. And so from this understanding and this unity and this unified consciousness, we have power. We have directed our faith into a deep conviction that says yes, yes to our concerns and our issues and our intentions. Yes to healing and wholeness. Yes to the resolution of relationships. Yes to peace spreading across the planet. Yes to the end of senseless violence. Yes to the end of violence, period. We don't even need it because we have something that's so much more powerful. It's called love. Let's use the power of love to heal our broken hearts. There's a, a line in, in, in the secret life of bees. I wish that someone would ring the bell and dab mercy on my poor soul. It's time to ring the bell and dab the mercy of the divine self-givingness on the souls of every experience that is being made manifest in life today. By this word, we have set that in motion. We recognize that there may be time to travel from eternity to now. And we allow that time to take place with a deep sense of gratitude and faith and conviction. It says, yes, it is already done. So we release that prayer now to the law by simply saying, and so it is. Mm -hmm. More power.